Welcome to I Believe. I'm so glad you are with me. No matter what you're going through, God has a word for you, a spirit-infused word. All you need is a spirit-infused word to get through what you're going through. You know, the scripture says that the letter killeth, but the spirit brings life. When you have a spirit-infused word, it changes everything. Share this on your Facebook page. Share this wherever you are, whenever you see this. Somebody needs it. So I was in Oregon, and I flew into Portland, and I drove over to Newport, Oregon, to minister at the Assembly of God Church there. We did a revival. And on the way over there, I was uh, on a two-lane highway, one lane going this way, one lane going that way, and it was in July, so it was warm. And a really dear friend of mine, a minister, called me, and he said, Jeff, I'm in a crisis for my faith. And I said, what do you mean? He said, Noah's Ark. And I said, what? He said, Noah's Ark. He said, I just saw that there are a million species of animals in a one, one square mile in Brazil. He said, how did two of every kind get on the other side of the planet and into a boat for God to preserve the animals? He said, if that's not true, then what is true? It makes everything fall apart. My faith, my, my faith in God's word, it's fallen apart. And I feel like the Lord gave me a right now word for him. He just put the words in my mouth. And I said, you can't take the miraculous out of the Bible to make it make natural sense. And when I said that as a God, as my witness, in July, it began to snow the moment I saw it, the moment I said it. It began to snow so hard and so fast on that two-lane road where nobody was driving but me, I saw it on the fence post, on my car, on the limbs. That's how fast it began to fall in July. And I told my friend, I said, you're not going to believe this. There's a sign and a wonder happening right now. It is snowing in July. And so that's what I want to talk to you about right now. And that, that man is serving God and more anointed than he's ever been. Having the Bible, having the word is great, but if you don't have it animated and alive by the Holy Spirit, then you don't really have the fullness of it. Scripture says the letter kills but the Spirit brings life. So I want to read you a scripture. Let's go to Ephesians 6, verse 14. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So there are different Greek words that are translated from to get our one word, word. Uh, one of them is rhema. One of them is logos. And right here, the word is rhema, which is the Word of God. So rhema I looked it up for you in Strong's. That which is uttered by a living voice, the sound produced by a voice and having a definite meaning. 
a declaration of one's mind made in words. Now, uh, the other one, um, logos, like John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, all things were made by him, was, without him was not anything made that was made. And then verse 14, and the word was made flesh, Jesus, and dwelt among us, and we beheld the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. So that word and all of those four scriptures is logos, okay? So logos is similar to rhema in that it also means of speech. It means the words that were spoken. And rhema means the sound of the words that were spoken. Spirit infused, revelatory, the experience of it the presence of it, there is a difference. And you know what I'm talking about. When you're sitting in a church and hearing a sermon, and yes, it's the word of God, but you're nodding off to sleep and you're poking your leg to make yourself stay awake because there's no life in it. You know what I'm talking about. And there's other times when you, and they may, they may pellet you with 35 scriptures, but it is not sparking on the inside of you. So let's look at it this way. Logos is like you're hearing, you're reading what the Gettysburg Address was that President Lincoln gave. Rhema is you're on the first row hearing, hearing him give it. Does that make sense? It's the experience of it, the sound of it, the impact of it, the animation of it. It is so powerful. So, um, and we're going to get more into this. The sword of the spirit, I looked at the word sword in the Greek. It means a large knife used for killing animals and cutting up flesh. The letter killeth. But the spirit right there is from the Greek word pneuma, and it means the Holy Spirit, the life-giving spirit. Let me tell you what we need in the world today. We don't need another sermon. We don't need another scripture hurled at us. We need the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit to infuse. I mean, the word is great. Jesus is the word. Peter, walking with the word, walking with the word, it was great. But for three and a half years of walking with Jesus, Peter didn't have the dunamis power, the dynamite power to not deny Jesus, to not burst forth in anger and cut a guy's ear off. He was aiming for his head, I'm sure. But the day that he infused the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God with the word and it filled his body. It gave him dunamis power. Hallelujah. We're going to talk more about this, but that's the difference between the letter killeth, but the spirit brings life. We need the Holy Spirit infuse power of the word of God in our lives. And if you don't know what it is to be regenerated, to be born of the spirit, the word is great, but you need that Holy Ghost within you to make the Bible come to life where it pulls you into the very scene that's being played out on the page. You need the dunamis power. When you are born again, the Spirit of God himself begins to mingle with the spirit man that you are, and it creates a brand new creature. You become a new creation, born again. The anointing of God comes to abide on the inside of you. So right now, today is a day of salvation. Right where you are, if you're tired of having the letter without the spirit, religion without the relationship, then this is your moment. Say, Jesus, I believe. Say it out loud. Jesus, I believe. You say, you're supposed to pray to God in Jesus' name. You know what? 
The fullness of the Godhead is in Jesus. So when you pray and say his name, you are praying to God the Father, God the Holy Ghost, God the Spirit. So you can, you can just throw away religious rules and just approach God in a realness and a reality. So say this with me. Jesus, I believe, I believe you are the Son of God. You died for me. You rose again. Forgive me of all of my sin. Fill my body with your Holy Spirit and use me for your purpose in Jesus' name. Thank you for everybody that is a part of this ministry. Right now we're at 183 ministry partners. We have two new ministry partners. Thank you for being a part of this ministry. Thank you for everybody that goes to jeffferguson.com. I love you. God bless you. Share this. If you just made a commitment to Christ or renewed your commitment to Christ and you're a new believer, we have a phenomenal resource for you at no charge. Just go to jeffferguson.com, J-E-F-F-F-E-R-G-U-S-O-N.com and then click the new believer button and we want to help you with some information for your new journey with the Lord. Welcome to the family of God. Happy New Year. I'm so glad you joined us today on I Believe. If you want to become a part of our ministry family, just go to jeffferguson.com, J-E-F-F-F-E-R-G-U-S-O-N.com and fill out the information form there so we can be partners together in ministry. God bless you. We appreciate you so much. I believe. Yes, I believe.